February 12th, 2014. The sharp sound of bullets made me and my friends spring away from the demonstration. I decided to skip school earlier that day. I was only 15 years old and I decided to attend a protest instead. I found myself in a crowd while the regime opened fire against us. Over the following months, dozens of murders and thousands of arbitrary detentions demonstrated the regime's willingness to increase repression and authoritarianism without any regard for a citizens' human rights. In September 2020, a United Nations fact-finding mission revealed a systematic pattern of human rights violations in Venezuela from 2014 to 2020, which directly linked Nicolás Maduro and his ministers of interior and defense to thousands of extrajudicial murders, arbitrary detentions, and continuous torture against political prisoners, including the utilization of sexual violence to elicit confessions from political detainees. The UN mission recommended an international probe against Maduro and government officials. Despite the international support to the Venezuelan cause and the broad sanctions applied by the United States and partners, Maduro still holds power and hasn't shown willingness to hold democratic elections. The findings of the UN mission and the short-term failure of the sanctions to generate a democratic transition raise a serious question that has long been kept on the table but hasn't been considered seriously. Should the United States and regional partners, including Colombia and Brazil, apply their responsibility to protect, principle, and intervene in Venezuela? The R2P principle, approved by the United Nations in 2003, aims to protect civilian populations from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and other crimes against humanity. The implementation of this principle lies in diplomatic, humanitarian, and other peaceful means but also allows for the use of force by the international community and coalitions to prevent the continuation of human rights abuses. Despite the escalation of violence and the scale of human rights abuses, there hasn't been a meaningful debate on the application of R2P in Venezuela. The mixed record of humanitarian interventions in the past and the failure to intervene in the Rwandan genocide both haunt the UN. Some argue that the R2P principle should be applied in cases of genocide or ethnic cleansing, which haven't occurred in Venezuela despite a pattern of violence and thousands of extrajudicial executions. If intense protests restart in Venezuela, however, the opposition might face increased risks because the Maduro regime has shown a disposition to ramp up violence against civilian demonstrators. Nevertheless, the approval of R2P is subject to UN Security Council approval, and a resolution on R2P in Venezuela would likely be vetoed by Russia and China. If the current strategy doesn't succeed in generating a democratic transition, the regime will likely increase repression and continue a campaign of crimes against humanity. In such a case, the international community should be prepared to seriously reconsider the application of their responsibility to protect principles.